Today, we are going to talk about what polymorphic JSON is and how we can parse it better in Swift. So what is polymorphic JSON? It's a JSON that can contain different type of elements in a collection. So imagine you have a JSON that uh, let's like, like here with items, which is an array. And in the array, there are different type of elements that can be sent to us. Like uh, they can be, in my example, they're gonna be geometric shapes, like one element, square, sphere, cylinder. And we also have a la 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 type, which is also, you know, to demonstrate what happens if you're going to get an unknown type. So that's that's what it is, right? The, the polymorphic, like you, you don't have one model. It's different, like the square, square has side length. The sphere has a diameter only. But cylinder has diameter and height. So there are different things. So what can come to mind directly is, I already created some uh, models for you. So imagine we have geometric shapes uh, that contains, it's a decodable and array of items and has a property common shape. So I'm going to skip the shape type for a second. In this common shape, we have a type, right? The type is the shape type, which is actually defining the types of the elements that can be sent here. Like, you know, every element has a type though. That is important so we can differentiate them, right? So it's square, sphere, cylinder, or unknown. So if in the future, maybe the backend introduces a new type, the client is not aware of yet. In that case, it will be set default, set to unknown directly, as you can see in the init from decoder method. This is a custom implementation, not much to it, really. We just grab a single value container from decoder, and we try to get type from the container in that moment, like, which is you try to con the decode from the container something string, and then with that value, which is the type here, we try to initialize this enum with a raw value, which is an optional initializer. So you provide the string to it and you try to get what it is. And if we can get some square sphere cylinder, it's fine. But otherwise, this double question mark means if we couldn't get it's nil, then we're gonna set self equal as unknown. Okay, and then how we can um, part, use this in the model, we have the type, and then common shape includes side length, diameter and height, right? So because we have to cover for all the possible properties because in square, there is side length, but in cylinder, diameter and height. So that's why we have one model that includes every possible uh, property. But which is not good though, because in this implementation, everything must be optional because for one model, it might be there, but for another one, it may not be. Then we lose, then we lose the ability of having optionals as like, you know, business optionals. Optionals can mean more than just making sure just you know preparing us for new values because as a business decision some things may be optional right uh, imagine for an entity sometimes some things are there and sometimes they are not and it makes sense but we lose that ability when we declare everything optional so i'm going to show you a better approach right and it's here i'm just if i run it here we're going to parse it and you're going to see like we are parsing it as geometric shapes from this json data over here and then we, get, we just print each element and you can see here we have common shape, which is a type is square, side length is 12, diameter is nil, height is nil, which is yes, square. And the other one is sphere, there's no side length, but diameter is there, no height, and etc. So this is not an ideal approach. So here we have a better approach below. Um, so we're going to use enums with associated types, right, to, to make that happen. And now we're going to declare three different models for each of the possible values, square, sphere, and cylinder. So the square is only gonna have side length, but sphere is gonna have diameter, and cylinder is gonna have um, diameter and height. And as you can see, um, nothing is optional, right? Because if it's a cylinder, diameter and height must be there. So we, we don't unnecessarily declare things as optional. You can also add the types here, actually. I, I forgot them. Okay. Now, okay, we have the smaller objects, but now we need, a, we need a way to identify while parsing that JSON what it is actually we are receiving. And for that, we need an enum with associated values. So this is a higher level enum that defines any possible shape. That's why it's called shape, it's type of decodable. And there are like three cases and also one more case for unknown case. And then here we have square with associated value type of square sphere with associated type of sphere and cylinder with cylinder and an unknown. And as coding keys, we only care about type. So that's why I declared it here as well. 
And then what we need to do is we need to implement our own init from decoder method so we can check um, what we actually receive in that moment and then we can initialize ourselves accordingly. So we, we're going to get the container from decoder again with the decoding keys and then we try to get the type as a shape type itself. If you remember, it's a, it's a type of string actually with some cases that are like, these are just values here that type can have, right? The type property in the JSON. And then if I come back here, then we try to get the type um, for key.type. And if we can't get it, we can already say, okay, you know, that we couldn't get a type, it's missing. So we can actually set ourselves as unknown and we can return early. And then if everything works fine, then what we're going to do is we're going to get the single value container again, and it's called object container. So now that we have the type, we know uh, how we can, how we need to initialize, how we try to parse ourselves. So now we can come here and say switch on type. And then if it's, if it's a square, that means I need to try to parse this as a square, right? Then what I'm going to do is let square is going to be try the code as square. And if this doesn't throw anything, I'm going to set self equals to square with associated value of the actual square. And same goes for sphere and cylinder as well. And then if the type is unknown, because you know, backend introduced something we don't know about yet, then the self is going to be unknown. And then now I have a different uh, struct here that uses this new uh, shape enum, geometric shape container, and has let items shape. And now we, again, we're going to try to decode from the same you know, JSON data, but by using this new container that uses the shape. Now, when we parse it, we can easily check the items, and for each one of them, you can switch off the value, right? Because it's an enum. So if it's a square with associated value of square, we can just print the side length. Or if it's a sphere, we can access its diameter. If it's a cylinder, it's a, we can access the diameter and height. So we're going to have some type safety for each item thanks to this enum. Like we know what actually that is. And it makes it really easy to build your apps and you know, you know, build your UIs depending on what item you receive. You can also do that um, with this somehow, right? This would also work, but in my opinion, this is not a nice approach with all these optionals, and you know, uh, you lose the ability of actual optional usage for you know business decisions. So let's. I will just you know run it here as well. And as you can see, um, for the you know, side line we get twelve, for diameter we get the value from the sphere, and also for cylinder we get the diameter and height, and also yeah. If it's an unknown type, yeah, I just print it here. So I think this is a better approach, in my opinion. Like it makes it really clean that how you decode polymorphic JSON that can be, you know, the JSON object that can be different models. So I tend to use it in my projects. I want to share this with you as well. Um, so yeah, let me know what you think in the comments below. See you next time.